Here we see that the number of painkiller prescriptions per 100 people in the purple states actually exceeds every single man, woman, and child in the state. Here, we're close to one per every individual, and even here in California, we're at, at least every other. So that means half this audience have gotten a, a prescription for uh, opioids uh, within the last year. So why are doctors writing more and more prescriptions? There's some history to this. The uh, Congress issued a, a law dedicating the 2001 to 2010, the decade of pain control and research. The American Pain Society, and Jayco took this on as well, to say that pain is the fifth vital sign. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid established pain specialty codes, interventional pain codes. The World Health Organization and the International Association for the Study of Pain came and actually dedicated October 11, 2004 as being the uh, Global Day Against Pain and issued the uh, mandate that the relief of pain should be a human right. No one's here going to argue with that. You know, we definitely want everyone to have their pain treated. The American Pain Society in 2000 said, yes, uh, they had a banner saying directing the future with greater access to opioids for pain control. But they also meant, or they ended up resulting in people also having greater access. And in our country, we have found whenever there's greater access, then there's greater abuse. And the two things go hand in hand. They, on their poster, they say dictating or directing the future today. And I often wonder now, was that a prophecy or a promise? The real issue that really hit the pain community hard was in 2001, when the Bergman versus Chin case was finally settled. Uh, Dr. Chin was accused of not giving a cancer patient on their deathbed medication, and he was not sued for malpractice, because malpractice has a limit, a very small limit. He was actually uh, charged with and convicted of elder abuse. Two months after that case closed, the California State Assembly uh, issued a law stating that every single physician in the state of California needed an extra 12 units of pain training. Uh, and in that pain training, they had to understand the treatment of the terminally ill. This is also the same time when, um, under the leadership of Dr. Steve Maffee here at UCSF, instituted the palliative care service to better help and uh, treat patients in their dying days. Another uh, key component to this urge for our community to definitely make sure we have plenty of prescriptions available to our patients in need was um, discussions by Russell Portnoy. He was a leader in pain management at the Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And he would go around the nation promoting titrate opiate dose to effect pain relief that uh, there was no ceiling effect, so if the patient has still had pain, give more medication. And this was what the general thought was at the turn of the last century. Unfortunately, this was not a good defense for Dr. Sang, who last week, this is all current, current events here, last week was the first doctor ever in the history of the United States of America to be convicted of murder for 30 years to life just for prescribing opioids. She didn't inject them, she didn't make them take them, she was just writing the prescription. And now she'll be serving 30 years of life for that, for that activity. And now Dr. Uh, Portnoy has been reported in 2012 to the Wall Street Journal that he uh, admitted that he erred in overstating the benefits and diminishing the risk of opioid analgesics. So no wonder that physicians are in this position. Damned if they do, damned if they don't. It's the biggest stressor we see in the pain clinic, we see in the pain field. Patients and doctors are really struggling what to do next.